Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, November 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Start a little bit a new thing uh, today and uh, calling it uh, Packet Tuesday. I have been floating uh, the idea for a while sort of on social media and the idea of Packet Tuesday is to deep dive in a brief a video into a particular uh, network packet uh, feature. Uh, the first one that I picked uh, for today uh, was these international domain names and how they're encoded with Punicode in a DNS. So that'll be the first uh, packet Tuesday and there will be one each Tuesday uh, going uh, forward. If you have any packet that you're interested in, any feature, uh, please let me know. And of course, this is brand new. So any feedback is highly appreciated. And talking about social media with Mastodon becoming uh, quite popular, maybe even more popular than Twitter right now when it comes to sort of the infosec uh, news scene, the Mastodon platform is, of course, also receiving more scrutiny. One example is a vulnerability found by Portsvicker. Portsvicker, of course, uh, the company uh, behind the famous uh, Burp proxy, uh, did discover an interesting vulnerability that allowed an attacker to essentially inject an invisible HTML form that uh, then uh, was used uh, to harvest uh, credentials. The root cause here was a cross-site scripting vulnerability that allowed injection of HTML. Now, often when we're talking about the uh, cross-site scripting, we're thinking about a lot of JavaScript. Here, it's really more about HTML in the sense that an HTML form was injected and uh, then the HTML form with a username and password field, well, uh, the browser would automatically pre-fill the credentials if you're using a password manager. And then the user was tricked into submitting the form by actually clicking on the little ellipsis icon. So it wasn't 100% automatic. Portsvicker did demonstrate the vulnerability with the InfoSec Exchange Mastodon server, but of course, it affected other servers as well, running the same version of the software. Mastodon was pretty quick in fixing it. The vulnerability was reported on November 8th. 8th and patched on November 15th, so less than a week later. But if even on the defensive or offensive side you're dealing with cross-site scripting, uh, this is a blog post uh, to read because it's a pretty neat way how they uh, exploited uh, this uh, vulnerability. And then we got an interesting vulnerability thanks to Veronis, who took a closer look at the Sendesk uh, software as a service offering. And now this is one of those cases where you have these complex nested encodings and they're hard to get right. Uh, the API that Sendesk uses uses GraphQL, the query language that basically uses sort of these JSON impressions. And then as part of the JSON, actually, there was a base64 encoded XML document that was included inside the JSON. And that all was then fed to a relational database, which then led to SQL injection. Good reminder that even if you're dealing with uh, these sort of more modern approaches like GraphQL, the backend is still often just a SQL and with that also subject to all the good old vulnerabilities like SQL injection. Talking about old vulnerabilities in new systems, Sandia National Lab concluded a study looking at vulnerabilities in the electric vehicle charging network. And uh, well, uh, this is actually quite a bit of a different network than what you usually find at your good old gas pump, for example, between the vehicle and the charger. There is also data flowing and a number of vulnerabilities that they found was, for example, uh, wireless uh, protocols being used that would allow an attacker uh, to terminate charging from some distance away, also skimming of personal information, and then, of course, the entire uh, back-end infrastructure that is connecting uh, the uh, individual chargers to payment architectures and the like is 
also found to be vulnerable. Overall, a lot of sort of classic IoT style vulnerabilities, of course, were found here. And uh, well, uh, Sandia, of course, is now working on getting uh, these vulnerabilities patched and also looking at uh, future standards to make them less susceptible to these vulnerabilities. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.